Hey there, welcome back to Voice Global. I am your host, Pete Erickson. I have enjoyed these conversations and our next conversation is one I've been really looking forward to. Uh, he's somebody I met, uh, I think early or late 2019, as we were talking about uh, Voice Global in 2020, even before the pandemic, uh, he and I started chatting. And um, I love this space because we live at the intersection of the human voice and technology. And that's really what the voice tech industry is all about. Whether it's uh, uh, an assistant that's speaking, uh, a speaker in our car or a chatbot, really it's the human voice that's happening. And AI is a reflection of our humanity. My next guest lives this every day. Uh, not only, um, does he do amazing things with his own voice? Uh, he was crowned the world's top beatboxer. Uh, he works with uh, global organizations and nonprofits uh, all around the intersection of humanity and artificial intelligence. He lives this, he breathes it, and it comes through him in, in many different forms um, that are unique, I think, in 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 the grand landscape of the voice tech industry. Please welcome to the stage, uh, my friend, my good friend, Harry F, also known as Reaps 100. Good morning, Harry, how are you doing? Very good, thank you, glad, yeah, glad to be here. Um, yeah, and, and to talk about voice, uh, yeah, with someone, like you mentioned us first speaking, and what I loved about your premise and, yeah, being a part of, of certain things you're involved with previously uh is that the world of voice despite it being i think so key to innovation there's uh so much like radical growth happening at the moment and over the last few years so in the art space in the tech space in the performative space like whenever i meet people like that because traveling a lot being in the in those spaces but voice specifically there's a lot of great things to talk about. And I personally think there's a connection there. Well, um, I, think, I think I need to stop you there because one thing I failed to do in my introduction is that people probably recognize you now. But last year, what we worked on was an introduction to Voice Global that was you beatboxing the Sonic brand uh, for, uh, for the intro music to uh, Voice Global, which we've done again this year. Hmm. And um, I think I love that tradition. I love the tradition of allowing uh, the way you approach art and music and human voice and sound to be reflected through, you know, through your work and then also as an introduction to our event. That video I still absolutely love from last year and I love what you've done this year to expand on that and how you take purposeful uh, a purposeful approach to incorporating you know life and greenery and human the human voice and technology because all that we're experiencing actually we call it technology but it's a reflection of us as humans so i, I wanted to make sure that i got that in that that you are the person behind uh that uh, that really those really captivating introductions also, I want to add that what we're talking about today is actually an exclusive in the voice tech industry. This is uh, we're going to go into areas that have not been shared before, uh, things that are new. Um, so I wanted to make sure I picked that up because I didn't quite cover it in my intro. But um, uh, thank you. And thank you again for uh, for leading that really highly artistic introduction for Voice Global last year and this year. Yeah, no, it's a. Uh... It was really fun. And I think it's important to say that it's not like a, an intuitive connection, like beatbox and music and performance when it comes to innovation. But the world that I come from is all about what are things that have never been done before, whether it's in the art space, but specifically with the voice. And that's been my, my world for the past five years, starting out as a globally touring musician, performing, writing, and composing for voice. But what started to happen is because I found techniques and on a physical level was using, in a voice, uh, using the voice in a way that hasn't happened before, I caught the attention of the academic world. And for the past five years, I've done a number of academic collaborations, been a part of a number of studies. And 
loved collaborating with experts and academic thinking when it comes to trying to define and understand these new aspects of voice. So what started to occur was this very natural soup of things where I'm able to perform and write and have these very radical, extreme uh, ideas in voice, meeting all these experts, performers around the world, then collaborating with academics and then the world of technology. How does the voice have a, a role in connecting with tech? And I think that trifecta is very, very powerful. And I'll get into this later, but I think the arts are vital to, to innovation and experimentation like that. Well, absolutely. I think that, um, you know, one thing I think about is uh, Steve Jobs, um, because he talked a lot about his um, sitting in on classes at Reed College um, on design classes. So he sat in the back of the room. He didn't even register for these classes, but he took in all this design knowledge so that when he went into technology, he combined design and tech and came up with the Mac and also, you know, the Mac was a designer's computer, still is to this day. And I think that's a, a, a good analogy for where we are today in voice, that, you know, we're at the intersection, not just of, you know, the, the human voice and technology and robotics and AI and all that stuff. Um, we're, we're actually going through another uh, design, human design and human interface and human user experience revolution more than just a voice tech revolution. Yeah. Well, I, get, I think there's some interesting insights from my world. And one of my collaborations with uh, the director of the neurology department at University College London, Sophie Scott, she shared that the most common form of anxiety is embedded in voice. And you can ask, okay, why is that the case? The voice is also the most common uh, form of, of expertise. We're all experts with our voice. We have uh, this ability to be fluent in language and that expert behavior that's found in voice is also connected to why there's an anxiety. We have this absolute predisposition to be hypersensitive, hyper aware of our voices. And it's because we are naturally dispositioned to be masterful and when you think about that, that shows that there is such a huge wealth of uniqueness uh, that is often ignored. And I think that using uh, experience, and you mentioned design, design is experiential. So the experiential art world, all these types of collaborations, to actually remind people, okay, we understand that there's a potential here, but this is one of the most complex, incredible sort of designs in all of nature that is the human voice. And, when we have a conversation like this, that is by definition one of the most complex acts in all of nature. So these opportunities are happening for a reason. And when we talk about voice, I just think it's important to say we're not just talking about another part of the body or a, another opportunity. This is one of the greatest achievements in, in all of nature. And that's why there's still so many new findings because of how vast and, and complex it is. Well, that's... um. I tell you what, I mean, just the way you summarize that, um, it uh, it also then, because it's one of the greatest achievements, I think, in nature, right? Then trying to reflect any of that in technology, just, just that's almost highlights just how complex it really is because the human voice is so complex. There's nothing like it in the universe. Um, so all the work that's being done right now and all the all the talk around conversation design and, and VUI and NLP and LNU and everything else combined, just as a reflection of just, you know, what a miracle, where a miracle the voice is. So let's get into that a little bit with regards to like some of the work that you're doing to actually represent the human voice um, and its uniqueness. And I think this is, again, this is a uh, this is an exclusive look right now in terms of like how you're doing it. But when we first chatted and you shared some of this with me, I, it just, it was stunning, quite frankly. Uh, and just, uh, it, it just showed the beauty, I think, of the human voice and also the uniqueness. And a bit like a snowflake, there's no two that are alike. I think this is really cool. So why don't we pull that up and let's, um, I'll let you tee it up if you want to tee it up some more before we pull it up here. Yeah, I will say one more thing. So when I started to move away from music, um, and just voice in a traditional sense, what I realized is that many people find it hard to acknowledge 
and take time to appreciate the uniqueness of their voice and the function that it has as, as a system. And um, it's so integral to our relationships, uh, our working relationships, our loving relationships, but also our sense of self. So there's a very interesting phenomena where you take the time to acknowledge your voice and you think about its role. There's this reinforcement of your own identity and that narrative played into quite a few of my tech-based projects, whether it was creating an artificial twin, which I could perform with, um, an AI second self. But then in continuation to that, voice-based sculptures. So developing systems that interpret voice data into form and color. So my previous collaborations have led to a brand new project called Voice Gems, which really plays on this narrative that there are opportunities for voice-centered design. And especially with the explosion of the NFT space and myself being in the digital and tech art space for a long time, this project is about synthesizing all of these experiences into something very tangible and challenging value and challenging our ideas of what is what is a digital preciousness? How can we have a tech-based project that tackles those things but also reminds us of the beauty of our voice? So you so, said voice, voice gems. Voice gems. Let's take a look. Okay, what am I looking at here? I, I, I see something looks like it looks like a gem looks like it may come out of the earth. Uh, what, what is this? So what you can see here, this is uh, an example of a voice gem. So the voice gems project uh, came from when I was creating uh, voice based sculptures. So using uh, voice data to generate shape and form. I had an experience two years ago when I was performing in Bermuda. And in this performance, I was creating these sculptures and I had someone come up to me and they asked, could I send you a recording of me and my wife and could I use this to propose? So instead of the traditional diamond engagement ring, could I actually use a piece of digital art? Um, he actually ended up sending me a recording of him laughing with his partner, which I then produced the, the digital structure. and. In that case, it became an integral part to his proposal amongst a number of uh, other things. And that raised a very interesting question about what is value, what is preciousness? And what you can see here is an example of the gem mm. from 2019 wow. that we created. And this piece uh, has, there's a lot going on there in terms of the narrative. I mean, for them, it was a special moment, but what is interesting is that we're actually able to capture moments and it reveals this blind spot, I think, that's in voice and the import importance of voice is when you think of uh, photography or portraits, you capture an individual and the nuance and it's a very established form of, of art and, uh, and presentation. But to actually have someone's last words, the laughter of a child, to be mm. able to say something that you believe in and interpret that information. I think beyond my project, I think there's a huge uh, insight and opportunity there that is not tapped enough. So up until this point, there has never been a project where you're able to take the traditional values of design, the uniqueness of vocal expression, the unique fingerprint-like data that's in every single unique voice on the planet and find a way to interpret that. So before I show you some of the other designs, I'm gonna give a very uh, quick look into how we make these pieces. So every single voice has key resonant frequencies. So even though nah, if I sing, if I speak, my voice can go up and down, but it's these key resonances that make up the sort of consistent, uh, tangible character of every person's voice. Mm -hmm. So what we actually do is with a 15 second to a one minute recording, we can find those key resonant frequencies and we use that to generate an RGB color spectrum. So from, uh, from that data, we generate a unique palette of color. And then with the uh, qualities like volume, tone and pitch, we actually put it through a bespoke system that sculpts and shapes 200,000 particles. And every single voice uh, creates a different gem. 
But if we use the same audio twice, we end up with the same result. This is a defined and refined instrument, which I think mm. is a very important point. Uh, right, right. It's not just random. It's not this just is actually. Random. It's actually a reflection of the of the human voice in multi very, in multi dimensions. Absolutely, and at the very center of the project is is pure data, and this idea of actually this is an artistic project. But we think about data analysis. We think about how we can use information in this way. But we're interested in well, how can we find a poetic and interesting way of of uh, tackling that? So this mm. piece, as you can see, this is just a, an interpretation of one of the structures that we get. So before we made the color spectrum, we then get form, and then both together creates a high resolution voice gem. And mm. these can be exported in many many different forms. So here you can see a three-dimensional version, but we can also render up to 16,000 resolution stills, which are very, very uh, incredible in the form of print, in high resolution video. But the main claim here is that with this boom of digital art, with decentralized technology as a whole, which is beyond just the, the NFT space, right. I think that there are new opportunities regarding what is value. And mm -hmm. if you look at the diamond, this was a, a concept that was pushed by the De Beer family. And this idea of having something that can represent connection, uh, tradition, like what are future traditions? And where's mm -hmm. the, where is the like, profoundly human uh, aspects of, of our future traditions? And I think right. digital, that is something that we're going to see more and more. And works like this, Works like this uh, are an insight into how we can create new narratives around technology, find new avenues for data that have never happened before, and have opportunities in making amazing stories around it. So in the same way that you can have uh, a narrative um, or an artist can create a work and they, they give it a narrative, from end to end, from vocal expression all the way through to the final work, this idea of a generative connected system where technology is the very, at the very heart of revealing something that is extremely human, the most, potentially the most human thing that, that we have, there is a, a poetic beauty in that. And I, I think it's changing, but technology can be criticized. There are tropes and narratives for many reasons that still sit with, with many of uh, our especially older generations. And I think it's artistic projects like this that allow us to explore value and connection and data um, in a way that is all encompassing. I can cert I can certainly well this is just this is just fascinating. I'm I'm sitting here just wrapped by the imagery, um, by the concept, uh, and and thinking about you know I I would love to have uh, you know my mother's voice and my father's voice. They're lo no longer with us. It would be amazing. And my brother. Uh, turn turn those into something tangible. Um, that would be that would be amazing. Um, let's talk about the color a little bit uh, before I go to my next question. So, are is are the color the colors that are a component of this? Is that is that also part of this, or can we choose the 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 colors that are reflected? So, of course, I we've been making custom gemstones, ones that are um, the structure is formed by the voice data but being able to have colors that reflect the people um, or the brand of, and when I say brand, we're, we've worked with a few of the world's leading like fine artists and they use specific color palettes. Mm -hmm. So what we actually did is we produced two gemstones, which is one which is true to the data. And then we have a slightly designed like custom gemstone, which is a, and again, obviously this is my work, but I find yeah. it an exciting design challenge. And when it comes to the color, it's fascinating. So. What I'm going to show you here is actually the um, uh, this sort of an, an iteration mm. of this project, where you can see these much like brighter, quite uh, different palette of colors in um, in this gemstone, mm -hmm. and this is part of a very unique series which is set on producing gemstones from the world's critically endangered species, so the voices mm. of critically endangered species. So we collaborated with Ben Mirren, who's a Nat Geo explorer who gifted this audio and we are able to, to do two things. We can produce the gemstones from these unique voices, but it's also interesting the use of 
blockchain technology as a form of preservation. So we've actually placed some of these gemstones. Well, I was going to ask. I was going to ask that about NFTs. Wow. So a final point is um, what you can do is once we place these these pieces like on the blockchain, you can explore, as I said, preservation, but also we have a lot of interest in terms of uh, the most vulnerable voices on the planet. What else mm. can we preserve? And the blockchain has, uh, is vast and the Ethereum blockchain has one function in the wider technology. But I think, again, people don't naturally see technologies like this as an opportunity to preserve and to, to, to serve nature. So now we're also looking into dying languages. We're also using the, the project to highlight um, other voices that should have attention. And there is a revealing of the function of this project, which is to highlight the most unique, vulnerable and remarkable voices on planet Earth and in every sense. So, Harry, on that last, on that endangered species, what can you share which which species that was we were hearing? I'm so sorry. Yeah, this is the injury injury from Madagascar. Okay. So, of course, I saw the name there, but I didn't recognize. Yes, yeah, um, so the injury injury um, is also known as the father of man. It's a it's a folklore from the area, um, and there is a, a huge concern for the species. Um, and there's been some interesting interpretation. Ben has also sent us like these incredible um, biosonospheres, so like the the general ambiance of the Congo jungle, mm -hmm. um, and this is a left of center, but there's questions of like, what is, what is the voice of a natural space like that? Mm. What, what is the voice of, of, a, of an entire um, part of the ocean? Um, and there are huge opportunities to use what is seen as experimental experiential technologies to bring us, uh, to grab our attention for things that are really, really important, the things that we should be discussing, because um, that's another aspect of my work is we have to consider how do we get people's attention? How do we right. make people care about things that are really, really important? So this, this, uh, these voice gems, not only are they a, a kind of a um, visual representation, but they're an audio representation as well. So like in that case of the injury injury, you were able to play um, the sound of that gem as we looked at it. Is that how other gems will be delivered or, or will some just be a visual representation and shared as a, as a digital NFT? Or is audio going to be a part, uh, kind of a coupled up with, um, uh, with that visual imagery? Yeah, absolutely. So there's one gem that I'm going to show you very briefly at the end of this presentation, um, which is it involves audio. Audio is a very important part of it. But once we receive the data, uh, as a as an artist like myself and my collaborator Trung Bao, we're able to choose the mode that this is shared. So we already had um, a set of gemstones licensed by the World Economic Forum, and they were presented as part of an experience um, for the Global Technology Governance Summit. Um, but in the, the modes, we have these high resolution uh, stills, which are up to 16,000 resolution. We can present as uh, a, a video form, which is the three-dimensional render. And we also have just done our first 3D printed gemstone. Mm -hmm. um, so once you start uh, bringing the work into the physical space, I think that's when things get really exciting is with understanding the digital potential and then also pairing that with, with physical um, sort of matches. And it can exist one or in its entirety, but the focus is what it represents and the data and, uh, and the artistic and the generative process. I think that's what's so exciting uh, about this project. It's yeah, I was gonna ask. I was going to ask about 3D printing as well because it just seems so naturally um, mm. uh, predisposed to that. But uh, yeah, let's uh, let's take a look at the last uh, last imagery here. Yeah, so this is one gemstone for an incredible artist called Philippe Pantone, um, who's someone that I've admired for a very very long time. Uh, this is a gemstone created by from the voice of Reggie Watts. Um, oh yeah, I know Reggie. I'm from Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Reggie, uh, I. Um, what an incredible mind, such a unique interpretation of voice. Um, 
but this, uh, yeah, his take on uh, how he communicates and performance and technology, uh, it was great to produce a gemstone. Mm. And this final piece that I'm going to share with you, um, this has actually just been included in the world's first uh, Meiji Museum uh, exhibition for NFTs, um, which we're very proud of. Wow. And this is um, slightly different to the other ones. Uh, myself and Trung Bao, we decided to submit this piece particularly because it captured something that was more artistic and, and more sort of uh, subjective and things that I really um, am interested in. And instead of just one voice, this was actually created from a hundred anonymous voices on the internet. Mm. So most of the voices were uh, were gifted through open source. So people made recordings and uh, submitted them anonymously. Um, others were found on servers and things that had, there's no human claim to them. So mm. what you can see here is a lot more colors, a lot more variation. So I'm just gonna play this clip very briefly and then uh, I'll men mention a couple of things. So people that are familiar with the space, uh, to be able to create work like this and just highlight this, it, in, for me, it's such an exciting and so hard to make tangible space, is online, we are so connected, but the internet is a, is a vast sea of anonymity. There are so many sort of insights into humanness and voices and people and avatars and profiles but a lot of it is still in the distance. And how can we sum up that meta space? How can we explore that? And these, uh, these are called the unknown internet gemstones. So mm. pieces like this are there to highlight something that otherwise you just never could. But right. being able to, to do that with work like this is something that I'm very, very- I watched of. that just now and I'm just, I was just wrapped. I'm like looking at that and like saying, I am seeing the voices of humanity uh, represented in this digital gemstone. I have to tell you the work, um, the work you're doing is, is, is fascinating. I think it's so important. And I love where the conversation has come just since you and I met a year and a half ago and um, things seem to be happening very quickly. And I really look forward to, you know, staying in touch with you and you're going to continue to be the, the, the voice for us uh, at, at Voice Global. We started a tradition and I hope this carries on because um, it's, it's a way that we <clears throat> remind ourselves that we're in this industry. Uh, we call it voice technology or conversational AI, but it's a human technology. We're a bunch of humans that are creating it. And, um, and it's important work. And the work you're doing is is taking it one step further and making sure that um, that humanity, that endangered species, that the planet is reflected in the work we're doing. I admire you so much, Harry, and the work you're doing. I really appreciate you joining us here at Voice Global. Any any final thoughts before we sign off? I guess just one brief one is I think a lot of the arts can seem untangible and like I really believe in this idea of practical dreaming. And when we think about the role of the artistic expert, the greatest works help us guide the use of technology, but actually the bleeding edge of, of tech is not that different to the bleeding edge of art and ex experimental practice. And there is a responsibility to make sure that we, we have to acknowledge that traditional media and the ways in which we would normally communicate is not working anymore. There is, there's an right. epidemic of misinformation and challenges to communication. And the artists are the missing link when it comes to making ideas connect and looking to pair world-class experts across the board with world-class artists. That's where real disruptive change happens. I think that is a powerful summary. The artist throughout history are the ones that have seen us through our darkest times and mm. artists are going to see us through 
this time of misinformation and the what you're doing right now to reflect um, real data is uh, is an example of that. Harry, admire you so much. Thank you so much for joining us again at Voice Global. Thank you for your very cool introduction uh, to Voice Global as well. And we look forward to staying in touch with you. And uh, thanks again. Pleasure.